美男。It is me, Police Mailbag, and I'm Ian Jones, and it's great to be with you as always.、Uh, Catherine is with me this week. Catherine Valois, we were we were, we were together last week as well, which is awesome.、Uh, Catherine is my studio technician, and that deafening silence that you hear is the absence of DKM. Dora Kilkenny Mondu is.、Uh, She's gone back to school. Dora is at、uh, Dawson College here in Montreal. She's studying to be a professional actor, and that means that、uh, we've probably seen the last of DKM for a little while. <laughs> I know the crew, the tears, the flooding of tears. I know it sucks, but、uh, anyway, she's going to be a great actor, and we love DKM. And she can come back on the show、uh, and tell us about.、Um, How it's all going in the acting world because that's kind of exciting, and、uh, of course she's seventeen, so、uh, it's all going to be pretty new and exciting for Dora. But、uh, anyway, she won't be on the show, but、uh, she says big shout out to everybody and、uh, thanks for hanging in with us when Dora was on the show.、Uh, what else have I got this week?、Uh, Chris Lewis, my good buddy. See, I was dying inside when I lost Dora, but I'm kind of happy because Chris is on the show. He's my good buddy. He's from Norton or Shifnal or. Oh, hang on a second. Is it Bridge North or Telford or Wolverhampton? I have no idea. Well, Chris will tell me in a second. But、uh, apparently, he's been、um, upset by the rioting in England. So we're going to talk to Chris about that in a couple of minutes.、Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some really cool things that are happening between New York and Gander in Newfoundland, just off.、Uh, well, that's the island, just off the the coast of Canada. It's one of our provinces, and、uh, really cool story. Something happening between those two.、Uh, well. Gander is a small city. New York is a big city, but something really cool is happening between those two.、Uh, get this too: scientists found this really old sort of village. I guess it's an ancient village off the coast of、uh, off the BC coast, off of British Columbia. That's where I'm going to be for the next couple of weeks after this show because I'm going on holiday. But、uh, apparently, this village is ten thousand years old. Crazy! So、uh, that's really interesting. I'm going to tell you about that, and I'm going to tell you about Gordon Ramsay, the chef. Yeah, really interesting story. I, pretty much everybody knows who Gordon Ramsay is, but、uh, I'm not necessarily into food a lot. But、uh, I got a good Gordon Ramsay story to tell you about. And then, of course, we got tons of music still from the、uh, music or from the Polaris Award nominees. I'm going to play some of that. And Eddie Rocksteady sent me some music from Barcelona, so I'm going to play some of that. And then we're going to do some of this, and then some of that, and then some of this, and then some of that. And it's all going to happen this week on the Maple Leaf Mailbag. No DKM. It's too bad. Yes, 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 yes. No DKM. No, no DKM. No DKM. I know Johnny V. You're going to be very upset about that.、Uh, Johnny V. Johnny Versalino down in Downers Grove, Illinois, likes to.、Uh, Chat with Dara a little bit on our Facebook page, and、uh, actually, you know what? She probably will still turn up on our Facebook page because、uh, she likes the Facebooking thing.、Uh, actually, while I'm at that, I'm going to say a quick shout out to some of our friends, some new Facebook friends out there. Sharon Blackman,、uh, she is with Artists International. She apparently studied business administration at Troy State University and lives in Atlanta, Georgia. We want to say a big shout out to Sharon, who's one of our new friends.、Uh, Joseph. Antwi Boatang, he、uh, says he's an assemblyman and he lives in Takaradi in Ghana, where our good friend Ike Boat、uh, hails from. And so we want to say a big shout out from you.、Uh, he actually says he comes from Kumasi in Ghana. That's Joseph Antwi Boatang.、Uh, Bishan Goshal is a good buddy of ours.、Uh, he lives in Calcutta in India. But、um, well, Bishan's been a long time friend of ours. But、uh, I think he had his Facebook site hacked by somebody, and so.、Uh, He had to repost everything, and so we refriended him. So Bishan is a good friend twice.、Uh, Clara Germain, we talked about Clara last week. Clara is a new friend of ours. She lives here in Montreal. She's、uh, well, she's a francophone, but she speaks beautiful English. And、um, you know what she likes to do? She likes to do restaurant reviews, and she talks about food a lot. And、uh, anyway, she's great, and we love her. And big shout out to Clara. And I'm going to get back to Clara in a second because we're going to talk more about food in one minute.、Uh, DJ Emmy, we want to say a big shout out to you. Doesn't say where he's from, but he's born on March 20th, so that would make him.、Uh, is that a Pisces? March 28th. 
Yeah, it is, isn't it? I think it's a Pisces. Yeah, thanks. Getting the big thumbs up there from uh, Catherine. And also, Josephine odura Boaki. we want to say a big shout-out to you. Uh, she said that she's been studying at a tele- uh, polytechnic school. Um, doesn't say where, but I think it's in Ghana because uh, I recognize your last name, and I think I've got another friend from Ghana with that last name. Anyway, big shout-out to everybody. If you want to become Facebook friends with us, please do. The Maple Leaf Mailbag Rock and Road Show, that's where you go. And um, I think Chris Lewis is one of our Facebook friends. I'm not really sure, but he's on the line with me. So let's get to Chris really quickly. Chris, are you there? Yeah, I'm here, mate. Are you? A, are you? You're a Facebook friend of ours, right? I think so. But if I'm not, I'll make it so. You certainly will, my friend. Uh, now it's a big. Uh, we're disappointed here because, of course, DKM has gone back to school. But that makes you know, kind of, you're making up for it somehow. Uh-huh. That's that's good enough for me. I'm I'm glad to be like first importance instead of like second. That's cool. <laughs> that's right. You're you're move, steadily moving up the ladder as other people drop off it. I'm cr- well, or else I'm pushing them off, whichever way you want to look at it. <laughs> now uh, I've been telling people it's kind of funny. You've got so many references: Norton, Shifnal, Bridgeport. Where? Which exact? Where are you? Norton. You're in Shifnal. Norton. It, yeah, it comes under the Telford Postal Code. So, for example, my postcode is TF119EQ, so it, it falls under Telford, but it's about six or seven miles from there. So it just clusters north and shift north, so you can actually pinpoint somewhere in this in this like country that I am. And for people who don't necessarily know where the Midlands are or the West Country, it's on the western side of England, toward, well, it's not really at the Welsh border, but it's heading that direction if you drive a lot. <laughs> no? Well, sure. <laughs> okay. A lot. Yeah, all right. Uh, listen, <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to ask you about this. Do you know who Gordon Ramsay is? Yeah, sure do. Oh, because uh, my friend Clara Germain, like I said, she's now a Facebook friend of ours. Uh, she is, uh, she's an expert on cooking, and she talks a lot about chefs. And uh, she was talking about Gordon Ramsay to me at one point. Uh, you know what? He's just opened a new restaurant here in Montreal. No, I didn't hear about that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, apparently they sell... It's like a really famous old Montreal barbecue chicken house. I don't know. Uh, what do you think about it? Uh, I just thought it was sort of interesting. Why would he do that? I guess it's a different twist, maybe, because I know that he's had some very, very like famous TV, um, TV shows like Hell's Kitchen, for example, both in the UK and the US. Maybe it could be a winner. You never know, because he's he has had fish restaurants or has got fish restaurants in the UK, some very, very, very successful businesses here in the UK. So it might be, you know, just a, a great opportunity to, to try something different. I think he's going to do well, because you know what? That barbecue chicken thing goes well in Montreal. Uh, I mean, I don't know if there's that many different ways to cook one, but I'll tell you what, he's kind of got it in a neighborhood which is next to a very expensive neighborhood called Outremont here in Montreal. It's a... Uh, it's kind of for the, for the the French rich, I guess you could maybe shorthand it that way. But uh, I think he'd know how to get barbecued chicken into those homes, don't you think? I think he's got a got a good chance. Like, I mean, I'd go for it, but I'm vegetarian. I didn't know that. Are you really? Yeah, sure. Oh God! Well, a chicken's like a think of it as a vegetable. They're delicious. Hey, I tell you what, people are always trying to convince me, but it's not. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Never. All right. All right, let's uh, talk about something else because uh, it's sort of really why I phoned you, actually, Chris, or what we're talking. You know, we talked to a lot of people this week, or a lot of people sent me stuff this week about the riots that have been taking place uh, all across the country in England. Listen to this. Um, I think you know Peter of Sapley, right? I'm not sure. Do you know our good buddy, Peter? Peter Henry Ashcroft, Huntingdon? Maybe. It rings a bell, but not 100%. Well, all right, here's what Peter said. He writes to us quite a bit. He said, Dear Ian and DKM, uh, the wind has been taken out of my sails with the rioting, first in various parts of London, then in other parts of England. Fortunately, that part of London where I used to live, Finchley, has not been struck. But I do know some of the other target areas. I've also lived in Greater Manchester, have relations in Gloucester, and also passed through Liverpool on various occasions. He says the broken and single parent families are probably the first steps to gang culture, which believes that laws are to be broken. I will not progress further on this subject. And then he gives me another story, which uh, was designed to amuse me. And Peter, it did. And I might uh, read it in a second. But uh, have you been anywhere near this rioting? Has it affected you particularly, Chris? Personally, it hasn't affected me. 
but it's it's just been everywhere. It's been in everybody's conversation. It, you turn the news channel over, it's been on there. But it's a little close to home because Wolverhampton, one of the uh, one of the cities involved, is not that far away from me. And as it starts creeping closer, it, it brings it home to you that, for example, even Telford might be next. You know, God forbid that it is, but it, it's just too close for comfort. Why are people in England doing this? I think people around the world want to know. You know, it's funny because after the Vancouver Canucks, a famous what, uh, Canadian hockey team, they were knocked out of the playoffs this past year and there was a massive riot in Vancouver and uh, not so different in some respects, uh, not quite as much violence, I think, as what you've seen in, in England. But people are asking this question, why are people doing this? Why do you think they're doing it? Well, slowly I think it's becoming apparent that it's being protested because of the lack of opportunities, the lack of jobs, um, people who are unemployed, especially the youth, which are the actual people who have been um, undertaking the protest. They want opportunities, they want employment, they want something to do. They want, I don't know, maybe just demonstrate for greater opportunities in life instead of, like I don't know, being nobody. But there really, really is no excuse for what they have done to the, you know, not only, you know, the cities, but it's their homes as well. They are trashing their own homes and also those around them. People have been made homeless. Um, people have been dragged out of their cars. Their cars have been set alight. It, they're, they're trashing their own their own homes, you know, and, and, and communities. And it's, it's absolute madness, but it's not going to make any progress to them. It's not going to benefit them in any way. Um... Well, I, I completely agree with you. Uh, I wonder if people are afraid, Chris. I, you know, I, I think they are because it's it's unprecedented. This has not been seen, well, since thirty years when there was protest, for example, you know, and also a little later in, in about nineteen eighty five, there was some there was some more protests when a, a police officer actually uh, was actually murdered during riots. But they are scared. I mean, I would be scared if it was right outside my doorstep. What would you do? You don't know whether uh, a petrol bomb is going to come through the window um, or what's happening to see your, your hometown and your house destroyed and your property. You fear for your life. Yeah, no, that's it. Um, we, we, we're seeing the images, of course, uh, here in Canada, and um, it, it looks like a... a it looks like a battlefield in many areas, that's for sure. Um, I'm wondering, uh, a lot of people talked about more surveillance in downtown Vancouver after the hockey rioting. Do you think that uh, more Big Brother is the solution and identifying those people who are doing these sorts of things? Or do you think that there's another solution? I probably think that watching is is not you know, the the best option out of this. I mean, there are many, many, you know, surveillance cameras in London, but I think, you know, maybe paying more attention to the to the installations there are already and addressing the issues in hand, you know, which it's slowly come around. They they are actually doing this, they're looking at things. But I, I think that half the, the reason people have crashed the place and set fire to things is just an excuse to do it because it's part of the culture and I reckon some of the uh, the mouths in society must really be addressed because you know something's rotten somewhere, and it's it's slowly emerging. So I think it's it's more a matter of, of dealing with people face to face rather than just just keeping an eye and saying nothing. Yeah, I think you are right. Um, listen, we want you to stay safe. I want you to stay on the line for a second, but I want to play a little bit of music, Chris. Uh, I sure. want you to stay on the line because I want to talk to you some more. But I also don't want you to tell me what you think about this. This is some listeners' music. Waribi Blitpor Benny. Waribi writes to us a lot from Barcelona in Spain, as you probably know, Chris. He's sure. the president of the Radio Zeter Club, and he says, Hola, Ian Jones. I'm sending you this, my song, which I'm hoping that you get, uh, we, you'll get. you be able to listen to if you open it up with Windows. Well, Rebe, we open it up with Windows. We've got it. It's called I Love You Too. It's by Eddie Rock Steady. And Chris, you stay where you are. Sure. Tune to love you. Tune to be a lover. When I'm gone, I'll learn all. Hey, hey. I love you too, I love you too, I tell you that I love you, I love you too, I love you too, I tell you that 
that I love you When you smile, I smile along When you cry, my comfort comes When you walk, I'll be beside you Holding your hand When the sun come out to play I'll never be far away When you tell me that you love me This is what I'm gonna say to you I love you too, I love you too I tell you that I love you I love you too, I love you too I tell you that I love you Like the fish love the sea Like the honey and the bee Like the lizard loves to climb Up into a tree Like the bird loves to go Way up in the sky Like the worm loves to go Way down low I love you too I love you too I tell you that I love you I love you too I love you too I tell you that I love you Like the grass loves to be green And the earth loves to be clean Like the sun loves to shine And the monkey loves to climb Hey, these things happen naturally And that's the way that it's gonna be Like the farm still loves to go Way, way, way down low I love you too I love you too, I tell you that I love you I love you too, I love you too, I tell you that I love you From the first time that we met This story will be true There'll be a life long time to spend In the corners and the bend Up into the hills And true valley places No matter how things change This one thing will remain I love you too I love you too I tell you that I love you I love you too I love you too I tell you that I love you When the sun come out to play I'll never be far away And when you tell me that you love me This is what I'm gonna say to you I love you too There you go. A uh, song's called I Love You Too. Uh, it's by Eddie Rock Steady, a.k.a. Waribi Blip or Benny, and uh, goes out to all the reggae fans. But I also want to send it out to Hakim Tilmatin Kuzmail, and uh, she wrote and actually requested that song. Listen to her. This is what she said. She said, Dear presenter, it's my belief that everything in life has happened for a reason. Uh, there are some consequences, some not. All active individuals must oblige in making and multiplying positive influences for benefit for all. He, she says, uh, or Hakim says, these challenges in life make you discover things about yourself that you may not have even thought about. So I am requesting the song by Eddie Rocksteady, I Love You Too, also uh, because it's the occasion of commemorating, I guess, the left. The, the death of um, Princess Diana. And so uh, she says, greetings to all other listeners of the Maple Leaf Mailbag, especially Radio Zeter Club members like Princess Funkazi Pebble, Debbie Douglas, Princess Osio Agama, sincerely, Hakim Tilmatin Kuzma. And uh, so we say big shout out to all of you guys uh, out there in Barcelona. Uh, Chris, you're still with me, right? Yes, still here. You like reggae? That, you know, that was good, yeah, I don't mind a bit of Bob Marley now and then. Yeah, what, what, what's your sort of music? What's your uh, what's your thing? I like easy listening stuff, um, quite a few things from the 80s, um, OMD, uh, just easy listening, easy going stuff, maybe stuff by like David Bowie and Pat Metheny Group, all that sort of stuff. Okay, that's my kind of uh, action. I like that music myself. I think we're we're uh, we're working on the same kind of thing there, Christopher. Uh, wanted to ask you what you thought about this story too. Really cool story. Um, 
Of course, uh, I guess we all know what happened in uh, 2000 or September 11th, 2001. We all know what happened. Um, but you know what they're doing? Uh, Gander, do, do you remember what happened in Gander when uh, 9-11 happened, Chris? No, mate. Gander is on Newfoundland. It's like the little island province, uh, sure. that, you know, in our maritimes or just north of our maritime area. And basically, 39 airlines carrying about 6,500 passengers were diverted to Gander uh, when they shut down the North American airspace. Uh, I don't uh-huh. know if you remember there was lots of airplanes yeah, that were yeah, grand- sure, no, grounded. And um, it's kind of interesting because what's happened is uh, Gander and... I guess uh, New York have got together and New York is sending them twisted pieces of steel from some of the buildings that came down to use as uh, in, in sort of a commemoration kind of way. It's, a, it's kind of a gift of appreciation to show uh, their appreciation for how the displaced airline passengers were treated in Newfoundland after the tragedy. I thought that was pretty cool. No, I think that's, that's, that's a, it's a nice way just to, uh, to reciprocate, you know, the, the feeling, the, uh, the friendship between the two countries. No, it's, it's a good way to remember one of the most horrific events, you know, well, what happened in modern history, basically. Yeah, no, I know. Me too. I thought it, I'm just looking at pictures of the twisted mm. steel, and I think it will make a fantastic memorial, and I think it's a really good thing to do with the buildings because it was, of course, uh, a horrible, horrible day for uh, so many people. And uh, But this way we can at least um, reimagine you know, those loved ones that we lost sometimes and, and, and what people do and how they reach out to each other in these times of crises, right? So I think that's pretty cool. Too right. I Chris, totally agree with that. Uh, I want to say, uh, i got to go, but uh, I just want to thank you for being on the show and hanging out with us here. Uh, wish, any summer plans quickly? Not really. I've just got a, uh, got a holiday booked in September-like and then one in December. But up until then, I've got to remain at work, unfortunately. So catch a bit of the uh, the sunshine while I can on my days off. <laughs> That's okay. I mean, it can, is it? What's the weather like in England right now? It's not been bad today. Had quite a bit of sunshine. It's been a, a little bit cloudy the past couple of days, but the temperatures have been, you know, still about twenty three, twenty four degrees at about five thirty this evening. So not bad at all. Oh, that's that's fantastic weather for all blighty. Exactly. Instead of like rain showers and the rest. I mean, it made me just very quickly just made me amused this afternoon. Listen to a weather forecast. It was like sunshine across continental Europe and then showers across Great Britain. It's like typical. <laughs> <laughs> it makes me chuckle. It really, really does. That's true. Well, uh, is that the opening of the football season this weekend as well? Well, I think well it was meant to be, but what with the uh, what with the riots, there's been many, many matches cancelled. Some very important ones as well. So we have have to see what happens in the uh, in the UK as far as the uh, the matches in the in the big centres because it's another opportunity. Sure. Well, I'll be looking uh, to see Telford United against Bridgeport or Shifnal or Wolverhampton Wanderers. Well, I'll be looking know, for that just result. Keep those eyes open. Watch the space. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher, you take care. Good to talk to you. Likewise. Take care, everybody. Bye. 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 That's Christopher Lewis. Chris, uh, as you just heard, lives in Norton, which is in central England. And uh, Chris has been on, coming on the show, well, for the last 10 years or so, different times, just to keep it's a little update. And Chris, uh, big shout out to you. Thanks for hanging out with us here. We do appreciate it. Uh, I want to say a big shout out to uh, Mr. M. Gennison. We mentioned Mr. Gennison on last week's show, and he sent us an email saying, thanks for including my letter on last week's mailbag. So, uh, yes, we are happy to do that. Uh, Mr. Gennison lives in India. Also, Doug Jones, uh, Doug Jones, Doug Jones, Doug Jones, Doug Jones lives in well, lives in this country. I'm not sure where Doug lives, but he said uh, another great overnight program. He was talking about the link. And uh, he said, uh, on another note, what mental zone is Ian Jones in? I don't know, Doug. It's a zone. Everyone's, yeah, everyone's got their own zone. I'm in my zone. Whatever it is. I don't know what it is. Uh, Margarita Lundqvist, we want to say a big shout out to you in Sweden. Uh, she wants to say a big shout out to DKM. She likes listening to some of the Polaris music that we've been playing. Of course, she loves Terry Haig. And I just want to say... Margarita, we love Terry Haig as well. I know I'm poking fun at Terry's musical choices all the time and his age and uh, his other various things. <laughs> but we love him. He's our buddy. And uh, so don't worry if I'm mocking Terry on the show too much. I tell him all the time to listen to the show because uh, he's going to be mocked on it. But we are good buddies. 
Just like we are with you, Margarita. Big shout out to you. I uh, want to say uh, hello to Ragu Arumugam, who lives in Vedaranayam, and that is in India. And uh, he's been listening to The Link, which is RCI's sort of flagship show in English. It's a culture show. Awesome show with Mark Montgomery and Carmel Kilkenny. Encourage you guys to listen to that if you want to find out all about what's happening in Canada. Uh, some great stories there. Uh, Arthur Fernandez Lorella lives in Malgrat de Mar, and uh, he's been QSLing me and asking me if the Maple Leaf mailbag has any other QSL cards. And as you all know, a QSL card is what you get when you file a reception report to say that you've heard the show on shortwave radio. And Arthur, we've only got, I think, three different. Well, we've got we've got two different ones for the Maple Leaf mailbag, and then I think there's about four other ones that are from RCI. So hopefully, the Bear Build a Bear Weston Haver in audience relations has given you one of those other ones. But I've only got two for the show. Uh, also, want to say a big shout out to D1 uh, Tanvir. He says he's oh, uh, well, he's an only son. He's 12 years old. His dad listens to the show. His dad is uh, Dewan Rafikal Islam, and his mother is Mrs. Tansin Ara Kanam. Kanam apparently means beauty, by the way. Uh, but anyway, he listens to the show with his dad. He says uh, he goes to school. It's called the Nawagawan KD Government School. It's only 20 minutes walk, he says. 20 minutes walk in Canada. That'd be a long way to go to school. But uh, anyway, he says it's a 20 minute walk. He says he's got many friends, but his best friends are Debos Niloy. Labiba, Asif, Tarek, and Shaman. And he says that his hobby is stamp collecting. And we want to send a big shout out to you, uh, Diwan, and your dad and mum out in Nawagawan in Bangladesh. Also, uh, Mukesh Kumar, he lives uh, in Musafarpur in Bihar, India. Big shout out to Mukesh and all the gang at the Cosmos Club. And uh, also to a new listener, uh, Mohammed Abdur Razak. Uh, he's the president of the Sarak International Radio Listeners Club. They're in Bogra, in the district of Bogra in Bangladesh. And uh, so we want to say shout out to you because he says that they're regular listeners of the station, as are all members of the club which I think is fantastic. Uh, I want to say a big shout out to Jack Vochterhauser, who lives in Kelmscott in Western Australia. And uh, I've got a letter here. And it looks like Sue's been typing in Jack's notes because she said, Jack wants a maple leaf to sew in his coat. Thanks in advance, Bill. I don't know if the bear can find one of those, Sue, but we'll see. We'll see. I hope he can. Um, I'll have to get you something. Yes. Okay. Well, yeah, the bear likes, uh, what is the bear like? Penguins, you'll eat a penguin. <laughs> anyway, uh, she goes on to say that Jack's program notes, uh, she said, yes, there was a talkative girl on the program. There was, Sue. Um, not anymore. DKM is, she's gone back to school. She's going to acting school, so she won't be coming on the show any longer. But uh, I'll mention that you thought of her down there, down under. And whatever happened to the Maple Leaf Mailbag Army? That's a good question. Um, I've got somebody on the phone with me who can answer that, Sue. And so I'm going to get to them in a second. But Wolfgang von Wimmenheimer, who was an integral part of the uh, of the um, Maple Leaf Mailbag Army, uh, he whipped Private Johan into shape. And uh, he was very technical. He had a very technical approach. It was a peace and love army. But anyway, we'll see what, uh, see what he says about that. Uh, in fact, I'll pull that letter aside so that I don't forget it. Um, also want to say a big shout out to um, Richard Lemke, who lives in St. Albert in Alberta. Glad to hear that you're listening, Richard. And Richard always sends fantastic uh, reception reports in. Clearly, you've been listening to the show, and we really enjoy that. And we hope you're having a good summer out in St. Albert, Richard. Staying out of trouble, my man. Uh, also want to say a big shout out to Upili Fumudo Porbeni. Uh, she's also with the Radio Zeter Club. And uh, Upili says, I'm a successful banker in Nigeria. My clientele is increasing for the simple reason that I'm investing in them. He said, I've always loved to work in a team with my colleagues. Uh, they're very supportive and cooperative. He says, it's also been useful for me to apply uh, all of this to the resources of shortwave radio programs like yours and the internet to get this across to my clients. He says, I've had a lot of correspondence with people in Barcelona, in Canada, in the United States, the Philippines, Hong Kong, and many other places. And uh, he said, uh, I love it if your uh, listeners would like to communicate with me. Upili Fumudo Porbeni. Big shout out to you. Uh, 
Raffaello Biso lives in Genoa, and that is in Italy. So we say a big shout out to you. We love Italy. And、uh, Mitul Kansal is with the International Radio Listeners Friendship and Fraternity Club, and that is in Shahabad, Haryana, and they are in India. And before I get to more letters, I want to say a big shout out to Wolfgang von Winvenheimer. Wolfie, are you there? I'm here, Air John. Wolfie,、uh, it's been a while, buddy. What's going on? Wolfgang von Winvenheimer,、uh, Brigadier General of the Maple Leaf Mailbag Army, <laughs> retired, of course. <laughs> <laughs> It's kind of funny, actually, because、uh, Sue and Jack Vochterhauser they listen to us down in Kelmscott in Australia, and she、uh, well, I guess I guess it was Jack actually. He said, "What's happened to the Maple Leaf Mailbag Army? What has happened?" Well, I guess we were successful in conquering the entire world, and at that point, the,、uh, usually the soldiers go back to their lives. Working in the fields, toiling with the soil, eating the fruits of the labor. <laughs> so the peace and love kind of thing at work. Do you feel like、uh, there's no need to continue our work? It's already been done. Well, actually, the thing is about wars. When you win, there's a time of peace, but then sometimes you have to call up the troops again. Okay, so really, what we're doing is our army sort of on hold right now. But if we see the necessity, we'll bring them together again. Is that what you're saying? If the demand is there, we will rise. <laughs> okay, great, fair enough.、Face、the enemy. <laughs> Excellent.、Uh, what are you doing right now? Where are you, Wolfie? Well,、uh, funny, I'm calling you from somewhere else that you've been. Um, Belgium. Nine. Mexico. No, actually, nine. Is it, actually, what I did is I, of course, it's summer vacation for us Germans, and being German, I get six weeks paid holidays. And I thought it would be nice to maybe reach up,、uh, trace some of the steps that you took during your Maple Leaf mailbag rock and roll. Show. Oh, that's that's nice. And by the way, you can still hear the Maple Leaf Mailbag Rock and Road Show if you go to the website. And there's a, there's a number of places you can. We went across the country. We took、uh, how many? We took twenty days, I guess,、uh, to come across the country. And we did stories all across the country. So where are you then? Because we started in Tofino, and we went to Whistler, Vancouver. We went to Calgary, and We went to Brooks and Eston and Thunder Bay and Ottawa. Did you go to? Are you in any of those places? Well, I just started the tour, Mister Jones. So, taking me a while to get the caravan on the road. <laughs> <laughs> is that true? You actually have a caravan, or is it a metaphor? It's a metaphor, but well, it's a caravan. I guess I don't. I'm, I'm confused by your language sometimes. It's the machines with. The wheels, and it's like a house, and you drive it. <laughs> okay. Yes, I know. Yes, the caravan, like a, like a trailer. So, where are you? I, I'm still trying to figure out where you are. <laughs> I'm on Vancouver Island, on my way to、uh, Tofino.、Uh, you said you it sounded like you weren't sure there. Well, I may have made a wrong turn or something, because、uh, I don't see the place yet, but. I'm on my way. I think I'm in Toronto, and I'm in some place, some part of neck of the woods. So maybe you're you're familiar with. It's called Coombs. <laughs> yes, Coombs is very famous because there's a,、um, a farmers market there, and they've got goats on the roof because the roof is made out of grass, right? And don't they don't the don't the goats eat the grass, don't they? There's goats living on the roof of this this、uh, establishment. Yeah, I know. It's... Things and the goats are living there. I think it's quite、uh, dangerous, actually. Personally, <laughs> it's not dangerous. They've been there for years, and it's a it's a big tourist attraction. Actually, it's a nice memory that you're bringing up there. And of course, Tofino is fantastic. It's on the、uh, west coast of Vancouver Island. Lots of surfing out there. Lots of sea kayaking. Lots of whale watching. Are you going to do any of those things? Absolutely, I plan to emulate everything that you did on your trip with the boys. I plan to do the surfing, 
possibly uh, maybe go to the marina, do some fair watching. And this will be very interesting. I'll be sure to update you on exactly what happened. Okay, but we didn't go whale watching. Well, okay, I'm not doing it to a precise T exactly what you did, but this is the thing you do when you're in Tofino according to my guidebook. <laughs> okay, that's excellent. Uh, tell me something. Did you hear about that story in BC where uh, I guess some anthropologists and his students from uh, the University of Northern British Columbia, they discovered a 10,000-year-old village on the BC coast? Did you hear about that? Actually, that is one of the reasons why I was interested in this, uh, maybe making a trip to British Columbia because of uh, this reason. Uh, they've made a discovery that's quite remarkable. And I felt it due to my experience in archaeology. And I'm a bit of a, well, an expert, if I do say so myself. I maybe could go and lend a hand, maybe do some... Uh, digging myself, identify some ancient artifacts. (laughs) I think they've got plenty of people who know how to do it. But listen to this. This is the story. Basically, it's believed to be an ancient village of the Luksh Bailis, which was uh, told in oral history to the Halshsuk First Nations people. Apparently, most of the story was lost after a smallpox epidemic happened in the late 1800s. So There weren't anybody left to really tell the story well. But anyway, check it out. Uh, I guess the uh, the professor's name is Farid Fahemtula. And basically, uh, the group found fishing tools like harpoons, bone points, uh, fishing hooks, weights made from deer bone and antler. And uh, basically, they said similar bone tools have been found at the oldest village discovered in BC, which is called Namu, which dates back an estimated 10,000 years. What do you think about that, Wolfie? Well, it's- All right, well, it doesn't matter. Uh, Wolfie, you're breaking up. That phone is breaking up, so I'm going to have to let you go because uh, it's making all kinds of funny noises. But uh, I want to say have fun out on the West Coast. Tofino's a great destination. And, of course, uh, everyone loves coombs and the goats. Yeah. Hello? Yes, I can hear you better now. Oh, sorry. I uh, no, it's just it's, I guess one of the goats tried to pee on me. <laughs> I don't know what this goat. I was getting some ice cream and it just I saw the stream coming off the roof. That is not this kind of show. That's it for you, Wolfie. Take care, we'll be in touch. Wolfie? Yeah, I, absolutely. I'll be heading to the uh the, the, the tall trees in the next couple of hours so i'll let you know how that goes it's called cathedral golf if i recall from your um may have, uh, the the rock and roll show so <laughs> i'll be in touch and i'll let you know how things go take <laughs> care everyone and have a nice holiday thank you you too take care wolfie bye uh that's wolf wolfgang von Wimpenheimer. uh he's from a little town in germany called Würzburg, and uh he fixes tubas for a living, and he's quite often in touch with us because he likes to hear what people from around the world have got to say. Uh, James O'Brien lives in Cardiff in Wales. We want to say a big shout out to uh, James, along with Keith Alan Walker, who lives in Shanty Bay, Ontario. That's in this country, in Canada. Big shout out to you. Shivendu Paul is the president of the Metali Listeners Club, and they're located in Murshidabad, and that is in India. Mark Hart writes to us from Dar es Salaam, and that is in Tanzania. And also want to say a big shout out to Lu Chun Su, who lives in Melaka in Malaysia. And a uh, big shout out to all of you, all of you guys. I uh, also want to say uh, a big shout out to Mr. FN Power, who writes to us from Kananga City. And that is in Congo, in West Kazai province. He says, I'm fluent in English and French. I catch you on shortwave radio. We've got great communities here in Congo. And uh, basically, they've got a company. And I think what they do is they install satellite dishes. 
And so uh, we want to say a big shout out to you and everybody else who's hanging out there in Kananga City in Congo. Yeah. All right. Actually, you know what? I, I, we don't have much time because I'm not going to have enough time to play another song. But I do want to play a little bit of Destroyer because that's a bit cheesy, too. I want to see what you think about that, uh, Catherine. But uh, first of all, I want to say to Sunil Dangana, thanks for thinking of us out in Kathmandu in Nepal. Uh, Sunil wrote, Dear Ian, Dara and the whole RCI crew in Montreal. Uh, he says, I was really happy to listen to your last episode of the Maple Leaf Mailbag, which was awesome. He says, I'm writing to you after a long time from Kathmandu. About 11 years ago, I started to listen to RCI and the Maple Leaf Mailbag. Ian sounds the same, not a bit different. Uh, he says, looks like the technology has changed a bit, however. He says, when I came back from the U.S., I tried to listen to RCI via shortwave, which was strong and good. But it was really easy to listen online now. So that's how I've been listening to the show. Uh, last week, Dara mentioned about her trip to Massachusetts, he says. Uh, he says, uh, well, actually, you know, it's kind of funny because Sunil went to school in uh, Boston. And he said, uh, Dara mentioned that she went to the Long Wharf or uh, they say Quincy Market. It was my best spot to hang around when I used to feel lonely and bored. Yes, the Boston pizza. Yummy. Wow. Reminds me of my days in Boston. He said, I was there for four and a half years. Uh, he says, Ian, I went to Pokhara in Nepal. It's about five hours ride from Kathmandu, an awesome place. I saw the fishtail at, uh, well, um, it's kind of funny. The fishtail is the name of the mountain, but it's called uh, Machipuchari, actually. And it's in the Himalayas, but they call it, the nickname is the fishtail. And uh, Pokhara is right on a lake. It's called Fiwa Lake. And he said he did the boat ride. And he said there's a new attraction to see mountains by paragliding. And he also saw Davis Falls, which was he said was awesome. Anyway, uh, he goes on to say, I've already invited Ian to visit the Himalayas. Uh, I guess he could bring his friends too. We can all have a barbecue at my house, which is sunny and warm, even in the winter. Hope to see you guys soon in Montreal. And that comes to us from Sunil Dungana. The reason I wanted to get them on there was because I don't know what the deal is. It seems like uh, there's this real kind of retro sort of, uh, I don't know, vibe from the 70s going on in everybody's music. Uh, Ron Sexsmith seems to have got a bit of it and uh, looks like Destroyer's got a bit of it. Galaxy's kind of got a little bit of it too, but in a totally different way. But uh, anyway, there you go. Uh, Destroyer bringing back the sax. We'll feel like that. He likes the sax. Uh, before we go, I want to say uh, a couple of shout outs. Uh, we want to say hello to Simone Stupler, who lives in Bad Schlieff. Uh, we often speak to Simone, but uh, we hope you're enjoying the summer in Germany. Uh, I want to say hello to Vladislav Vladov, who lives in St. Petersburg in Russia. He said, a friend suggested your products. <laughs> I like that. We're a product. Uh, anyway, big shout out to you, Vladislav. Alan Ross lives in Ontario in Canada. We want to say, uh, well, lives in Ottawa. Big shout out to you, Alan. And uh, of course, uh, Cottage Country is famous this time of year in the summer in Ontario. I wondered if you were at a cottage sometime or set somewhere, Alan. Uh, Joseph Hager writes to us from St. Clair in England. Big shout out to you. Uh, also, big shout outs to Mohammed Mizanur Rahman, who lives in Siraganj in Bangladesh. Ted Scherzinger, who lives in Kingston, New York. Fan Fan Nico, who lives in Kananga in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Doug DeHart, a big shout out to you in cyberspace somewhere. We also want to say hello to Noble West in Clinton, Tennessee. Andre Kennedy, who's also in uh, on, uh, Ottawa. Chrissy Brand, who's in Manchester, England. And uh, Erica Nunez, who lives in New York, New York. And that's all the time Katrina and I have got this week for the Maple Leaf Mailbag. So everybody have an awesome next couple of weeks. Uh, I won't be here, but take good care of yourselves. I'll be thinking about you. Your car is with you, Mr. Jones. <laughs>